Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There's been a bit of drama over the latest concept sale for a few different reasons. I wanted to summarise the situation and some of the backer and official responses. The three concept versions of the Hercules Starlifter went on concept pre-sale with a range of $300 to $700 for the ship. There were big war bond discounts of around 10 to 20 percent for the ship. War bond is a term for using new money to buy things rather than any store credit, so no, no store credit can be used for war bond purchases, but you get a discount because of that. But lifetime insurance was now only available with war bond purchases as well. Previous to the last concept sale, the 100i, it was for any new concept sale purchased with store credit or not. Moreover, the sale encourages you to buy the M2 and A2, the more expensive variants, with Warbond, with new money, and gives you an additional free vehicle if you do that. So some people are voicing their anger because the price of the concept ship, especially the A2, being uh, $600 to $700, is extremely overpriced. The fact that lifetime insurance, it, which is LTI, is gated to Warbond and new money. Store credit and older backers are effectively having their funds devalued. There's been poor communication from CIG. And there's lots of other opinions there as well, obviously. And I'm going to summarise and highlight a couple of the more popular threads and articles that were written and talked about to give you more of an understanding of what some people's views are. So, Star Citizen's New Moves Prioritize Sales Over Backers was an article written recently by Bad News Baron, which I will link below. I'll link all of this um, source information down below because people have taken the time to write it, and I will link it there as well. The article goes over the history of lifetime insurance. It was originally intended as a limited time reward for early backers to help sales. After a period, it was taken away with assurances that lifetime insurance was unimportant and insurance in game was going to be pretty cheap anyway. At backers the quest basically later lifetime insurance got reintroduced for people that um, got into pre-order and buy these concept sales, these new concept ships. With the latest sale of the 100i and the expensive Hercules line of ships, lifetime insurance has become more of an exclusive reward to backers investing new money into the game. Previously any purchase of new concept ships using store credit would have also given you lifetime insurance on that ship. Generating more funds for the game is important. Lifetime insurance is a tool for that. It seems that Baron's opinion is that backers, for the most part, are waiting patiently for the game, but due to delays there is stale money or unspent store credit that might not have been foreseen by CIG, and they might want to encourage new money into the game. Other things he touches on are potentially there are shareholders for CIG and Star Citizen that would expect returns on their funds. Star Citizen is not the Kickstarter project it once was. It's grown to this massive project size. Allowing the melting of ships into store credit encourages more spending as backers can melt a ship and spend a few more dollars to get a new concept one. It's sunk cost fallacy monetized to an incredibly clever degree and no apology is needed for that. It's up to individuals to control their spending. He goes on to say that Warbond discount as well as gating lifetime insurance and perks on concept sales is anti-consumer and devalues old money, store credit and gift cards. He does go on to say that CIG hasn't approached the level of customer squeeze that EA or GTA 5 has or lots of other microtransaction games, but CIG may be moving towards maximizing funds from its customer base. Not knowing CIG's margins or finances causes issues when working out if the studio is in trouble or greed or even if it's just sensible standard practice. He says he believes in the project and staff working on it. He would just prefer his invested dollars to be just as valuable as a newcomer's. There are a few Reddit and Spectrum threads that are worth summarising too. One titled CIG, your promotions are getting out of control. CIG, your concept promotions are starting to get out of control. Not only are they increasing in frequency, but you're introducing ships with a much higher price tag. You are taking away benefits from early backers and you aren't communicating these promotions very well with the backers. The too long didn't read version of the whole thread is CIG is starting
starting to cross the line with concepts and promotions and they need to get better at communicating with us, especially when they want us to buy $700 spaceships. Uh, another thread, removing lifetime insurance from non-war bond is an anti-grey market move. There are those that believe that the lack of lifetime insurance on non-war bond sales doesn't hurt long-term backers and that the changes may be to curb the grey market, the third party purchasing of ships, typically from Reddit or eBay, I suppose. Grey market traders may have hundreds of rare lifetime insurance ships. CIG might want to limit numbers in the game. The new system allows lifetime insurance to still be available, but less easy to stockpile by grey market traders, potentially. There is a mega thread on Spectrum as well, entitled CIG is destroying their funding model, which is Basically, pretty much all of this, um, everyone's opinions into a big boiling pot uh, where you can wade in on the topic as well, which I'll link, as I said, down below, uh, as well as an official response from CIG community manager Ulf about this. But let me give you the question that he was asked by Sailor67. Can you guys please explain why this move was made? Almost anyone using store credit will have a lifetime insurance tokens or, worst case, get one on the grey market. It will not force anyone to war bond unless you guys get rid of the CCU process, which is cross chassis upgrades, which is the upgrading from one hull to another and um, through the upgrading section of the website. So all you did was burn a bunch of goodwill with zero increase in revenue. You guys have been brilliant in your marketing and sales thus far. I'm just not getting this one. Ulf replied, no one is forced into anything. If you want to add a Hercules Starlifter to your fleet, you can choose between the available variants and options. As said before, we like to reward people who are backing a ship at an early stage of its development and in that way also fund the ongoing development of the game. There are lots of different comments and threads around as well on the Reddit and Spectrum um, with things like, I wish they would have unconditionally killed lifetime insurance in 2013. Uh, why do we care about ship pricing and whatnot? I thought ships were just a thank you for donating. There are worries that the game will be like spaceship Pokemon. CIG will have loot boxes and microtransactions up the wazoo and things like that. The, the game might never come out. It's a money grab. And it's being talked about and argued from about a thousand different viewpoints. I'll give you some of my opinions on the subject too, as they are. Yeah, I would like my store credit to be at least as valuable as new money. But I also understand that with the older concept ship sales, I was actually getting a lot better deal. And that was partly due to backing early. Lifetime insurance isn't an important perk. They've previously talked about potentially all bought ships having statutory insurance anyway, maybe. We've also been told that lifetime insurance is a minor perk, but we don't know how it works. And I'm a bit juxtaposed as I do want it on all my ships, but I understand that it's not important, but I'll try and get it where I can. It is really important that backers voice their opinions, not just on the game, but also the marketing and company's practices. The open development model that CIG have done brings a constant stream of unprecedented news and access to the game and allows it to be playable at its early alpha stage. However, it is a double-edged sword. It potentially slows down the development of the game because they have to have this semi-playable game, at least even in alpha, and they market it as this sort of um, every new module is a next big thing, even though it's still the alpha of the game. It also leaves them massively open to criticism and scrutiny at all levels. Communication is the thing I have most issue with when it comes to all of this. If CIG had talked potentially about these changes with concept sales, putting lifetime insurance on Warbond only, giving more perks to Warbond ships, and explaining that it's to reward the continued funding of the project and the previous concepts you got were a lot more value by backing early, maybe even with a particular sale saying, this is the last time we're planning to do um, the lifetime insurance with store credit. And so the people are then at the very least braced for any changes and backers could voice their opinion so that they could change some bits and bobs around if the community was very opposed to it. There is sometimes a disconnect on the marketing side when it comes to what will annoy the community. And we've seen that with the referral competition and land claims before this too, amongst others. And a lot of what CIG seem to do seems to be reactionary when it comes towards this. There doesn't seem to be enough vetting. There doesn't need, seem to be someone there saying, 
hang on, that will probably annoy the community. Or why don't we ask the community before we do something that's new when it comes to marketing or sales? Whatever your opinion, CIG operates like a company. They want to generate revenue to fund the development of their game. It's very likely that this is the only way that a game like this, to this scale, would have been funded and made. Looking at Star Citizen's funding chart, they've made over $1 million, it looks like, from the concept pre-sale already of that Hercules, with the sale available to everyone on the 11th of May. That will give us a bit more data on if people are going to be voting with their wallets. However, at the moment, with that pre-sale, it looks like people are very much buying the ship. CIG have raised around $185 million now, but personally, I think they're going to need at least $250 million and a couple more years before we have a Star Citizen Persistent Universe beta. They are a company and will try to monetize their concept ships and products to make the most money that they can without damaging their community where possible. They are trying to build a game of a lot of people's dreams and they're leveraging that dream to fund it. I have no real way to judge how many people think this is inappropriate and are angry about it. It's important that the community has a voice and that helps guide Foundry 42 and CIG and Star Citizen how it operates in the short term with things like the next few PU patches with what's going to be prioritised and available to play, but also, as I said earlier, as they operate as a business. I find it hard to be particularly angry about this personally, though. I only really recommend people buy a starter package if they do want to back the game at this stage. Everything will be available in-game. Sometimes I do think a few extra dollars to get yourself an Avenger Titan over the normal starter ship might be worth it, as it's going to be really useful now, as well as when the game's released, but it now it gives you sort of like instant access to the gameplay that's currently available, a lot of it anyway. I buy ships for making content with, really, at least that's how I've justified it. I have, for the most part, all the ships that I want, and I have a couple of lifetime insurance tokens, a little couple of ships that are ready to be upgraded into new ones, if any do come out that I really do want. But I'll get anything that I want in-game. I'm planning to play Star Citizen a hell of a lot. I don't feel that my funds have been devalued personally. That said, that's because I don't have any store credit. The ships that I've typically bought previously have only gone up in value, and I've always upgraded them at the right times or near the right times to get the next ship more cheaply. For example, the Starfarer went up in value, and then I cross chassis upgraded it to a Carrack. My store credit became two Orions recently, once I realised that that ship was going to be doubling in size. Also, with store credit, you can buy back a ship that previously had lifetime insurance on it, and then you can CC you cross chassis upgrade to one of the ones you do want. My hope is that people aren't buying ships to skip gameplay or avoid the grind. I don't want in any way for ships purchased to be pay to win, or for that to be the norm of how to get them once the games are released. Anyway, that's really a Topic for another video. I'd also like to point out that I don't really 100% agree with a lot of Bad News Baron's conclusions on his article. His point on potentially there may be shareholders, for example, is highly speculative. And when looking at the feedback even, it seems that the vocal minority are the ones that are voicing the majority of the discontent with these changes. For the most part, to me, the whole thing seems relatively minor. Though I do understand people's viewpoints and annoyances at this, especially if they've got a lot of store credit and because they don't like unexpected change, especially when it comes to things that they're buying. And I suppose they worry that it's a slippery slope to CIG becoming the next EA. But there's plenty of other things to worry about in real life that are much more likely to happen, like a meteor hitting Earth, or not getting enough exercise, or what am I going to eat for dinner tonight? I love the Star Citizen project and its community. I'm planning to cover it for its duration of the development and then many years after its release. Not just with news, but with gameplay and guides as well, as well as potentially any other thing I can think of. And stuff you can do in game as well with face over IP. I'm, I'm very much a Star Citizen fanboy, is what I'm trying to say. But I'm a fanboy because I really, really have done my research. I really enjoy the game. I really enjoy the project. I love the staff. I love the community. And I will continue to cover Star Citizen news, warts and all, because that's the self-appointed goal of my channel. Feel free to pitch in in the comments below. Tell me your opinions. Tell me your thoughts on this. Do you care? Do you not care? Please be respectful and courteous to other people's opinions. Um, and when you're writing 
uh, comment in the first place, even if you don't agree with anything that I've said or with the, the, the sources that I've quoted or summaries and stuff like that. If you don't agree with my opinions, that's totally fine. You're totally entitled to your own opinion. In fact, it's very important. Please don't smash the keyboard in unfocused rage, even if you don't agree with them or me or whatever. But I would genuinely like to hear people's preferably concise opinions on things. Every month we have a ship giveaway. This time for May, it's for a Tonkin Turtle, the Tumbrel Nova Tank, and a Terrapin, donated by our spotlighted org, the Talons Outer Haven. They are a prominent Star Citizen roleplay organization that is focused on exploration and kinship, as well as player character-driven lore. They also have their own roleplay-related internet radio station, which is a real radio station which you can listen to, uh, which is called Radio Free Outer Haven. They are recruiting for those interested in roleplay and want to participate in the alpha testing and development of Star Citizen. Links below to their org and radio station. They are incredibly friendly. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that ship and vehicle bundle is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my May YouTube videos throughout the month. Each video gives you another chance to win. For more information on anything we talked about, check the links down below. A special thank you to my Patreons and donators. Your support allows me to create the amount of focused content I do. Again, links to further support the channel are down below as well. Please remember to like and subscribe as it really does help me, as does your feedback. Please take care, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.